Hello everyone and welcome to IT Knowledge Base. In this video lecture, let's exclusively talk about how to prevent your Active Directory environment from ransomware attacks efficiently. In IT, being a security mindful, our utmost concern should be how to securely design Active Directory tiering to prevent all sorts of internal and external attacks, including all types of malware and ransomware attacks in the company. You should follow my earlier video, Secure Active Directory Tiering when Mitigating Past the Hash Attack. And this is the most important video and you should apply it right now in your Active Directory environment. Ransomware has grown to become a potential threat to all the organizations, sparing no industry or size bracket in its goal to capture files and other company assets. Where there's data, there's an opening for threat actor to hold this sensitive information, ransomware and demands payment for its release. It's imperative for all organizations to have a plan for how to prevent and respond to ransomware attacks, but in order to understand how to pay pay today, it's also necessary to understand how ransomware has evolved to reach its current state. Ransomware is the most disreputable attack until now because ransomware embraces cryptography. Ransomware becomes dominant. Ransomware and malware are also merged and play a very bad game. And ransomware attackers leak and upload the company's sensitive data on the dark web. Most of the IT departments are not following secure adaptable IT practices and are still using the old-fashioned style of the same highest privilege accounts everywhere to manage internal and external corporate servers including domain controllers and other types of secure servers and workstations. After careful watching this video, the solution execution that I am proposing here is the only prevention at the moment to secure your active directory environment. Trust me, you will be 100% preventing your internal active directory environment from ransomware attacks to get in. Or if it gets infected by other computers in the network, it cannot destroy your entire network. And you may say that this is one of the concrete solutions in many to prevent ransomware attacks. And the most important is, it does not cost you anything. In this video, I am going to prove to you the effective and the only method that works nowadays to harden and prevent your active directory environment network in actuality. And none of those attacks works if you have the fundamentals correct. If you understand how operating systems and security systems work, none of those should work. The world is changing now and reactive security is lifeless. So everyone should move on to proactive security and make sure the operating systems are secured with the correct configurations. End of this video training, you'll know the biggest threat to your security and how to increase protection. To secure your Active Directory infrastructure, you have to seriously follow the directory trading configuration I have already uploaded earlier. Just go and check it out to secure your Active Directory environment and you should apply it right now. Okay, this is my typical lab situation. This is the typical Active Directory domain scenario just to demonstrate how my network looks like to prevent ransomware from the outside from getting into our environment and harden the corporate Active Directory servers and workstations through the group policies. In my existing lab, I have two domain controllers, or maybe more in your case, I have several critical servers and workstations and all of them are centrally domain joined. In this video, I am going to show you three recommended and must-have group policy settings that make your Active Directory concrete to prevent any type of ransomware attacks. I would recommend these group policy settings and you should strictly implement these group policy settings on all of your servers and workstations and that's very simple. You can also download all these group policy settings from my Google Drive URL and the link is also provided in the description. 5 steps to defend against ransomware You don't want to affect it by ransomware. Your data is yours, not a toy for some faceless scammers to take off you until you pay up, usually in bitcoins or some other cryptocurrency. Fortunately, we have some steps you can take and behaviors you can adopt. To keep your data out of the hands of scammers, make regular backups. This is Ransomware Defense 101. The scammers want to restrict access to your data, but if you have a recent backup copy of it, they've already lost it. Organize your vital data so that it is stored in a single location and regularly backup it all up. Your backup schedule should be based on how often your files are updated. Daily users should get a backup daily. Keep your computer updated. Whatever platform you are using, desktop, tablets, or smartphones, Stay up to date with your operating system's updates and upgrades. Did you disable Windows Update? Switch it back on and make sure you are running the latest version. Spot suspicious files enable file extensions. One way of combating ransomware and other malware is to use your eyes. Many malicious tools have multiple file extensions. 
such as for example invoice.pdf.exe which immediately identifies them as dangerous. If you know what you are looking for by enabling file extensions in Windows, you can spot and delete them or let your antivirus software destroy them. Use mail filtering. In 2023, there is no way that you should be using a desktop email client that does not scan the incoming messages for malware and phishing attempts. If you don't, at least set up a rule that filters out and deletes email-bound exe files. These should never be sent via email and never be opened when received. Employ an internet security suit. As with all data security challenges, the best protection you'll get from ransomware is with a competent internet security suit. While the free internet security tools are good enough for live scanning and as firewalls, you'll need to consider a paid alternative. Tactics that won't stop ransomware. You may have read or heard about other strategies you can use to defend against or undo the encryption caused by ransomware. Unfortunately, many of these are now out of date. We'll take a look at them now. If you already encrypted your data with BitLocker or any third-party software, this will not stop protecting or preventing further ransomware encryption attacks. This is said but it's true and don't be in contentment that you are protected. This is just as an envelope can be placed in another envelope or a zip file zipped up again so an encrypted directory or entire hard disk drive can be encrypted a second time once again. Using System Restore, in the early days of ransomware, you would have a good chance at recover by simply employing Windows System Restore to wind back the clock. These days, however, ransomware is usually programmed to delete the system and restore files, so this also does not work either. Set the BIOS clock back, another time-related fix that no longer works. Adjusting the BIOS clock to an earlier period can help increase the time you have remaining to pay a ransomware demand. However, if you keep backup of your data, there should be no need to do this. Paying criminals does not make the problem go away, they'll just target you again and again. The first group policy setting I am going to show you is User Account Control or UAC. UAC is the Windows security feature designed to protect the operating systems from unauthorized changes. Removing the admin rights made a 75% decrease in the number of help desk tickets. If you unequivocally want to use UAC, don't turn it off. The UAC that asks for just yes or no is vulnerable to driver-based attacks. Not that common, but it's possible. You could use that approach of two users if you 100% trust your users and nothing prevent them from logging on with the admin account interactively. UAC settings in order if you have computers that are logged in by admins. Add this UAC settings to the policy. If you don't, Great, you mitigating 80% of attacks. In special cases, if domain users are required to run the process or program, you could add those domain users to the local PC's administrators group so the domain users can elevate the process with their privileges. Like this. In addition to this, tier 0 defense. The holy grail or something that you want very much but that is very hard to get or achieve of every attacker targeting a domain admin account so that domain admins can be stolen. We block them from being used anywhere else than where they are needed. Link this following policy to every computer except for your domain controllers. You can later tweak and split your Active Directory into more tiers, deploy a Privilege Access Workstation or PAW etc. Now the Tier 0 Defense Group Policy Isolation is the one that you must apply right now. The second group policy setting is Block PowerShell for limited users. Block PowerShell for limited users, not a single ransomware would have worked so far. This is a sad truth. But not a single known successful ransomware attack today would it work if you just block the PowerShell for the limited users. But I don't lock it for admins. Even today, if I try to launch PowerShell from my machine, I will just get a message like this. 
I can also elevate that to an admin and can do my work because PowerShell is the most used and the most recommended and the most powerful thing on your PC but I always block it for limited users. Not a single ransomware would it work. The third group policy setting is control PowerShell outbound traffic with a Windows firewall. If you can't block ransomware command control traffic, then you will be destroyed completely. That means make sure that your device has a firewall rule for outbound connections that block these engines that are used to infect your machines from getting the commands from the command center of the ransomware or any type of malware. Even if the malware gets on the machine, it can't get command, it can't send that encrypted data, it can't upload the encryption key for the data and whatever. But I mean it cannot communicate if it gets through, block it from talking outside. Probably some of you have to enable PowerShell management to Azure. But remember Azure list always has a secure IP addresses list. Which means you can twist this rule around and say don't allow any PowerShell except to our internal network and Azure IP addresses. That is one of the best security you can do and again it does not cost you anything. Remember, in security don't let attackers are perfect but be the enemy of them. Generally speaking, if you have looked up a tactic for circumventing ransomware and the article is 3 or more year old, you can be reasonably confident that it won't work. These scammers are no fools when it comes to encrypting your data and holding it to ransom. But if you follow these group policy settings and the recommendations discussed in this video, you can at least be confident that you can deal with a ransomware attack without paying in untraceable bitcoins to get your data back. I want to know if you have been hit by a ransomware. Did you pay the demand? Perhaps you overcome the infection by other means? Tell me about this in the comment section. Alright, that's all I wanted to share with you on how to bulletproof your active back environment and prevent all sorts of ransomware attacks effectively. We can tweak, harden and play more ever smarter later on. Until then, let's do this now. If you are learning ethical hacking, information security or cyber security, all are equally emphasized for you to perform defensive and offensive hacking approaches, trainings and tactics. Those who have a sporadic nature of learning like me should watch this video repeatedly. I am sincerely showing gratitude to you for being here and I look forward to joining you through this lecture. Thank you.